Hi, this is Ralph Wilson with Web Marketing Today. I'm in San Jose at the eMetrics Marketing Optimization Summit with Marco Hurst. Marco, uh, I want to talk with you, with you about online business models. Now, there are a lot of different kinds of businesses out there on the web. I mean, there are tens of millions or more. Right, at least. But I guess there are four business models that are the basic models. Correct. Let's talk about those four so we can get some kind of insight. I mean, there's a lot of variety, but let's, let's talk about those four models. What's the first one? Sure. So the first one is e-commerce, and it's simply what most people are used to you know, thinking about and knowing. If you're selling stuff on, online, it's very easy to figure out and know why you're doing it, and you can simply measure you know, the output at the end of the day. If you're in the black, you're good. If you're in the red, you're not. Okay. Now, we've oversimplified, of course, a business model, but uh, essentially it's selling products at a profit and still stay, stay competitive, which is not an easy thing to do because there are a lot of people that are that are buying at a very good price and selling at a low price. So uh, Exactly. But it's easy to measure, at any rate, uh, whether you make the sale or not. It is. Compared to the other business models, e-commerce is simply your easiest because you know if you're selling products or not, and you know, again, whether you're in the red or in the black mm -hmm. at the end of the month. And the way to improve with that model is to improve the conversion rate, either on your product pages or on your landing pages, depending on how you sell. Correct. It's all about optimization at the end of the day. And again, e-commerce is an easy model to do that because you can see where your abandonment rate is, and it's typically on your main landing pages, your product detail pages, or in your shopping cart. And those are typically your big ones that you go after. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, online stores that do well have a lot of content about the kinds of products in the, in the field, which leads us to the second kind, of, we're kind of fuzzy into the second kind of business model. What's that? Content. Okay. And so a typical content site is oftentimes like people think of CNN.com or NewYorkTimes.com. Or Web Marketing Today. Or Web Marketing Today, exactly. Um, and typically what these business models do is they actually make money on advertising and it's mm -hmm. actually the only business model that people should really be worried about how many page views you have. It's the only one where page views actually make you money. Okay. Uh, but page views don't necessarily make you money because some advertising is based in, is on a cost per thousand basis, but others is on a performance basis. Correct. So it's not the number of people who see it, but the number of people who click, click. or the number of people who actually uh, complete the transaction, whatever you're trying to get. So that business model gets complex as well. It does, and especially when you get into more of the advanced where people have to click through or actually convert. Personally, I think those are some of the better models that are out there now, and it tends to move us away from the old Wild West where it just meant a page view or it meant that you just had eyeballs. Again, now it's actually about proving the results, and that's a step forward in the mm -hmm. industry. I've seen a lot of small businesses combine those first two, as I mentioned. They'll have a lot of content which draws uh, search engine traffic to their site. Mm -hmm. And then once they're there, they sell them the various products or they point them to referral kinds of products of one kind or another uh, affiliate program. So it's, it's possible, I think, to combine those two very effectively. Oh, it absolutely is. And most sites actually have at least two of the four. Some even have three. And for a quick example, Amazon. So the models are straightforward, but the way they're combined together can be rather interesting and powerful. The third model, uh, you mentioned is what? Support. Okay, support. So tell me about this model. Sure, so customer support is, again, just to go back to the quick example of Amazon, if my book doesn't get to me, my first reaction is typically to call, but I don't have Amazon's phone number, so I'm gonna go look for their contact, you know, help me section on the website. And their typical um, support is to, well, give me your, you know, uh, UPS code for, you know, a shipping code. So they will take me through a series of steps that will allow me to actually solve my need on their website as opposed to calling, which may cost them somewhere mm -hmm. between 12 and $20 for a few minute phone call. So it's a much cheaper model to do that. Now, is uh, support an actual business model or is it a subset, say, of e-commerce? It is, technically it's qualified as a separate business model, but the other three business models make you money where support saves you money. Okay. Uh, and a lot of times a support, it will be a support section of, a, of an e-commerce website. Yes. If you don't have it, you're in trouble. You do, um, and this is where a lot of companies actually get in trouble. Um, they, many, they, many of them may bury their phone number. Um, 
you can take that for what it's worth. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them really don't have enough robust self-service support model. Um, and again, you're just wasting money at that point because so many people could be served online. I heard it phrased in an interesting way. Would you do business with someone that, that hides their phone number from you? <laughs> <laughs> and that's a very good, very good question about it. Now, there's a fourth kind of business model that you mentioned, lead generation. Tell us about that. Sure. Simply put, lead generation is any time that you are collecting PII, personally identifiable information. And so this could simply be capturing a newsletter, give me your email, um, or I'm capturing that and ultimately selling you a white paper such as, you know, on InfoWorld Today, you know, or things like that. So I'm capturing your information and I'm either using it for myself for later purposes, hopefully for CRM. Unfortunately, too many companies actually just capture it and don't know what to do with that information. Um, or they may be passing it on in the case of a third party white paper. Okay. So this is, uh, lead generation is, is a step in sales, the process, usually for where a telephone call or some other response, uh, it's, it's a several step process. Uh, some items, you know, people are willing to you know, put it in their shopping cart and buy it, and others, they need some talking to and some, uh, some kind of educative uh, sales and stuff to buy the product. So this is kind of a, a, the first step in the sales process. Absolutely, um, and it may be the only step, you know, in the process. It depends, you know, you could continue to extend what lead generation is, especially when it falls into or spills into more traditional business models of what people think is lead generation. But at least for online purposes, if I'm capturing your information, it's because I'm taking something from you because hopefully I'm getting something from you. Okay. Well, Marco, thanks for talking with us about business models. Tell me about your business and what your business model is and what you do. Sure. I'm the Director of User Experience at Colangelo. We are an Omnicom subsidiary based in the New York City area, and we are a through-the-line marketing agency. So we do everything from TV, print, radio, digital, of course, uh, packaging, and events. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ralph. This is Ralph Wilson with Web Marketing Today. Thank you.